Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at the mod Create Steam and Rails, which allows you to make steam and rails. But all jokes aside, Create Steam and Rails is a really cool create add-on that has a whole bunch of new features to the Create Mod Train system that will really improve gameplay and make it a whole lot more fun to build and play in your trains. So the first thing we're going to take a look at are two new minecart variants. That is the minecart with workbench and the minecart with jukebox. These both work pretty much how you'd expect with a minecart with workbench, adding a workbench and a minecart that you can right click and craft in. And then you can also take this around your world and as you're in the inventory, you'll still be able to craft. And the jukebox does much of the same thing. We can now play music and take this minecart along your world with you and play music. And one really cool use for these is just like throw some minecart couplings on your minecarts. And now when you have your minecart system, going wherever you want, you can bring along music and crafting with you. Next, we're going to take a look at a few new components to help with building your train systems. So the first one is a brand new block, the semaphore. And essentially what this does is it will display a train signal. So if I put this on top of a train signal, and then I was to go ahead and drive this train into that train signal, it will actually display the little block will go down and a red light will show up basically saying that hey something's in this train signal and nobody else can enter so it's a really cool very visual very neat little display that you can put on top of all of your train signals now these do need to be coupled to the train signal with a metal girder if i were to delete it or replace it with another block you'll see it'll be down and they'll have that little red light but as soon as I put a metal girder there, it will connect. And one super cool thing about these is you can actually stack them. And when I do go ahead and stack them, you'll see a second semaphore will show up as yellow. And now this doesn't do too much on its own. So you can see when a train enters its system, both are going to go down. However, if I were to have a system that had like multiple paths, the yellow one will go down if any train enters the system or anything is blocking one of the paths, but the red one will only go down if all of the paths are blocked. So there are a lot of theoretical situations where the yellow one would be down and the red one would still be up because there is an open path for trains to go down. The next thing we're going to take a look at is the conductor whistle. What the conductor allows you to do is basically tell a train where to go without using stations. So if I go ahead and right click on the conductor of my train, it'll say bound whistle. And now as I go along the track, we'll see this little arrow show up. When I click the arrow, we'll see a little flag and our train will travel to that location, which is super cool. Now, sadly, you can't do this on curves, but if I go all the way to the end here, I can click there, and my train will come all the way to the end of that curve. And then the last item is going to be the train coupler. So I did not actually get this to work. I read through the description a lot of times and tried a lot of different things, but it just always seems to crash my game. So in theory, the way this should work is you right click under the front bogey of a train, and that will basically bound it to that. And then what you should be able to do is use this to basically select where this rear one is. And you want that under the rear bogey of whatever train you want to couple it to. So I'm gonna go all the way up to 10 and that connects it. And then in theory, I should be able to give this a redstone signal and it should bind my two trains together. And look at that, it worked. You can also give conductors toolboxes. So if I go ahead and right click on this conductor with my toolbox, you'll go ahead and put it on, and I can right click them to access my toolbox. Then if I want it back, I just shift right click them. This will be super helpful because what you can actually do is if you have a train, you can actually have storage on your train. So if you give all your conductors a whole bunch of toolboxes, you can actually have a really efficient storage room ready to use on your train as you move around the world. Now the last thing you can do with conductors is super cool. If I go ahead and look at a conductor, he will actually press the button in front of him. So you can basically have a wireless way to just activate a button from afar, which is really helpful. Plus this also does work with levers. So now if I look at the sky, it'll basically toggle a lever on and off and on and off. And it's really helpful. And it's really exciting to have wireless redstone like this. Now, another really neat thing is if I go ahead and put on a blue conductor's cap, you can see I can still activate the guy with a blue hat. I can look at him and he will activate and deactivate the lever. However, whenever I look at the magenta guy, he won't do anything until I switch my hat to a magenta hat or just take it off. So you can actually control based on what hat you're wearing, what actions you want to do in your world. 
And now it's time that we take a look at the monorails. So monorails are super cool, basically allow you to build hanging train cars. So the way these work are very similar to our normal rails, where you can place a monorail down, right click it, and then you get the little placement grid where I can then can go and click it on another rail to place a rail system. And I can just kind of go through here and get all like the same actions as you can with a normal rail. Again, holding left control to kind of smooth it out. Um, I can do S bends, go up and down, all kinds of really cool stuff. And then once I have that, I can go ahead and control my little train. And you can see that it'll actually go over our little monorail really smoothly and really nicely. Now building a train is very similar to how you build it on a normal rail. I'm just going to right click the monorail where I want it to start, place it down, right click on my station, create new train, and you'll see the little box where you can place your first train casing, and then you can place your second train casing and so on and so on to build up your train. Now, sadly, at the moment, these don't have alternates with a wrench, but they do look really nice on their own, and you can make some really cool little train cars with them, which I have actually done over here. So you can see what I did is I just took my old train schematic and just kind of updated it to work for a monorail, which basically meant switching out the bottom train casings, filling that in, and then putting some new bogies up the top with the train station, and I made the schematics for those, which you guys can check out down in the description below. And one thing I'd definitely recommend when building your monorail tracks is to build little supports like this. So what I did to build my track is I built this little support and made a schematic of it. And then when I went to place my track, I just placed these schematics down so many blocks apart and then connected up the monorail track afterwards, which allowed me to very quickly build up my monorail network and it worked out really, really well. Next, we're gonna take a look at a few new decorative rails. With the mod, you can choose what kind of wood you wanna to use to craft your rails and you'll actually get that wood color for your rails as well as you can craft blackstone rails. These look super cool and will definitely be really helpful for all kinds of builds. But personally, I think these woods especially might work really cool for like some kind of lattice roof or whatever you could dream of using them for. The mod also allows you to do something absolutely incredible and that is placing slabs onto rails. So by taking a slab, you can right click and you basically place them over rails so you can actually sink your rails into the ground which looks super cool when you have your train go over it plus if you want this to maybe be a little bit lower you just right click it again with the slab or an empty hand to delete it and you can basically place a thinner kind of slab of wood and this does work with any type of slab you want to use for your rail and it's really really helpful and you can make some really cool train track systems with it this does work around curves however it looks a little bit blocky and sadly you can't actually change the height to the higher version and the curves it's only going to be the lower kind of like half of a half slab version plus it also works really nicely on inclines so you can see by default it just kind of sinks in or you can right click it again and have your whole track supported by the slab of your choosing and last but not least are the smokestacks. So in the mod, we have a whole slew of new smokestacks that can all be crafted up with different crafting recipes that basically just work as decorative campfires. They don't do the same functions as the campfires other than releasing some cool steam effects, which you can use on your train to add a little bit more decoration and a little bit more flavor to your builds. Overall, Create Seamer Rails is a really cool mod that I would definitely recommend adding to your mod pack. It has a lot of really cool survival friendly features and really does feel create like vanilla friendly and it works really well with the mod. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and we'll see you next time. Bye bye.